Good afternoon and welcome to the quarterfinals of the Inter Secondary Schools Debate Competition. I invite you all to stand as we begin with prayers. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for your blessings upon us, O oh Lord. We pray that you will be with us in these debate proceedings. We cover our speakers, we cover our judges, we cover the members of our audience, as well as the listening public. We thank you, Lord God, for being with us this afternoon. We thank you for the gift of education, Father. May all what we do be for your glory and for your honor. We make our prayer in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. We'll sing the chorus, Welcome Holy Spirit, after two, one, two. Welcome Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, we are in your presence, in your presence, Lord, fill us with your power. Live inside of us, welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, we are in your presence, in your presence, Lord, fill us with your power, live inside of us. Thank you, Jesus. You may have your seats. So good afternoon to everyone. My name is Dr. Kimon Joseph. I'm head at UWI Open Campus, well, Global Campus now, in Dominica. And it is my pleasure to serve as the moderator for this, the quarterfinals of the Inter-Secondary Schools Debate Competition. And this afternoon's segment of this quarter um, finals is taking place between the Dominica Grammar School and the Isaiah Thomas Secondary School. Our topic this afternoon is, gun amnesties are the best way to reduce the illegal firearm possession issue in Dominica. The Dominica Grammar School is proposing, while the Isaiah Thomas Secondary School is opposing our topic this afternoon. This afternoon, I am joined by three judges, and the chief judge for this afternoon is Cara Schillingford Marsh, and she's an attorney at law who has practiced law for over nine years now in Dominica as well as other countries of the Caribbean. She's a graduate of UWI, first class honors. She also is a graduate of U Wooding, and so I welcome Miss. Mrs. Marsh, who is our chief judge this afternoon. And assisting Mrs. Marsh this afternoon is Mr. Kevin Julian, who is also an attorney at law, and he practices in the chambers of the Attorney General. He has a passion for debating. He himself participated in the Kiwanis Club's debate competition in 2009, and he also participated in debates while he was at the University of the West Indies. Welcome, Mr. Julian. And our third judge is Mrs. Shari Pascal Moroni. And um, Shari is involved in marketing. She's a marketing manager at the National Cooperative Credit Union. She has a master's in marketing and innovation. And she is from Grand Four, so Southeast Massive. So welcome, Mrs. Shari Pascal Moroni. So these are our three judges for the competition this afternoon. As I said earlier, the topic for today is gun amnesties are the best way to reduce the illegal firearm possession issue in Dominica. And proposing that topic for us this afternoon is the Dominica Grammar School. And the first speaker from the Dominica Grammar School is Ilianette Jolly. And Ilianette is a Form 5 student, and she's a science student at the Dominica Grammar School. Her favorite subject is visual arts. She was born in Haiti, but lives in Canefield. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome Ilianette Jolly, first speaker of Dominica Grammar School. 
And assisting Ilianet this afternoon is Ms. Kishma Fewfield. Kishma is a Form 5 student at the Dominica Grammar School. She's a science student as well. Her favorite subject is physics, and Kishma is from Maho. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome Ms. Kishma Fewfield. Ilianet Jolly and Kishma Theofield are the students proposing the topic this afternoon on behalf of the Dominica Grammar School. The topic will be opposed by the students of the Isaiah Thomas Secondary School. The first speaker for Isaiah Thomas Secondary School is Amelia Charles. <laughs> Amelia, <laughs> Amelia is a Form 4 student at ITSS. She's a business major and she likes principles of business best. And Amelia is from Salisbury. Please welcome Amelia Charles. <laughs> Assisting Amelia in opposing the topic this afternoon on behalf of Isaiah Thomas Secondary School is Joannelle Serra. <laughs> Joannelle is a student in Form 4. She's a business major. Her favorite subject is literature and Joannelle is from St. Joseph. I invite the students to take their seats at this time. I will briefly explain the proceedings of today's debate and then we'll be able to move forward. So again, we're in the quarterfinals of the Inter-Secondary Schools Debate Competition, and our topic is, Gun Amnesties are the best way to reduce the illegal firearm possession issue in Dominica. Proposing that topic is Dominica Grammar School, and the two students there, Ileana Jolly and Kishma Theophile. Opposing the topic is Isaiah Thomas Secondary School, and our two students are Emilia Charles and Joannelle Seram. The first speaker from the proposing team, that's Ileana Jolly, will have 10 minutes to make her presentation to us this afternoon as she proposes the topic. When she's finished, the first speaker from the opposing school, Amelia Charles, will have 10 minutes to make her presentation. After that, we will listen to the second speaker from the proposing team, Kishma Theophile, and she will speak for seven minutes. After her presentation, we will have Joanne L. Serra, who is the second speaker for the opposing team, and she will speak for seven minutes. After that will come the very hard part. We, the members of the audience, will be completely silent for five whole minutes. Always feels like an eternity, I can tell you, for a talker like me, while the students plan and organize their rebuttal. After that time, the first speaker for the proposing team Ileana Jolly will get three minutes to have her rebuttal, and that will be followed by the first speaker from the opposing team, Amelia Charles, having three minutes for her presentation of the rebuttal. After that, the judges will retire to deliberate, and then after that, when we return, Mrs. Marsh will give us the judges' critique and then I will give the announcements. During the period while the judges are away, I will do my best to engage the audience in a discussion. So I think we are ready now to make a start. So with 10 minutes for her presentation, I call on the first speaker of the proposing team from the Dominica Grammar School, Miss Ilianette Jolly. Ilianette, come forward. When I give you the sign, I will start, okay? Organizers of the inter-secondary schools debate, judges, moderator, my esteemed colleague, and my friends on the opposite side of the spectrum, good afternoon. Today, my most able partner and I will be proposing the topic, gun amnesties is the best way to reduce the illegal firearm possession issue in Dominica. However, before I delve into the crooks of the matter at hand, it is imperative that I define the key terms. The Collins Dictionary defines an amnesty as, and I quote, 
a period of time during which people can admit to a crime or bring in a weapon without fear of punishment, end quote. According to the Oxford Learner's Dictionary, possession is, and I quote, something that belongs to you, end quote. According to the Oxford Dictionary, reduce means to make smaller or less in amount. Legal match define illegal firearms as weapons that are prohibited by gun laws due to their dangerous nature. The topic therefore suggests that the most effective way of dealing with the reduction of illegal ownership of firearms is by giving a grace period whereby people can bring in their weapons without fear of punishment. In order to win you over to our side of this debate, I shall be looking at one, gun amnesties help build trust between the public and the police. Two, gun amnesties educate the public by getting stakeholders involved. My partner will continue to lay upon the foundation that I will be setting by stating, one, several small islands are undertaking gun amnesties for 2024 and why. Two, more random raids will result in people hiding their guns. Let us now get into the meat of the argument. Firstly, gun amnesties help build trust between the public and the police. How does it do that? This is how. Imagine this scenario for a second. A mother discovers that money is missing in her purse. She suspects her son. The first thing she does is to give him a volley without even giving him a chance to own up to his action. How do you think the relationship between the mother and the son will be like after that? Clearly, the son will be afraid to own up to his actions, thinking that he may get punishment for any misdeed. However, if the mother gave a grace period whereby the son could own up to his actions, the son would realize that the mother is offering grace even though he is undeserving of it. He would see this and want to act right the next time. If the mother does not give grace, the son may even say, but these blows I always get in, so I'll do my thing and I'll take my blows later. The same is true with the police and the public. If the first order of business is to punish rather than to, rather than to offer grace, the civilians will hate the police more than they already do, thus widening the gap that already exists between the two. As such, the implementation of gun amnesties gives an avenue for grace. The police are in fact saying, through amnesties, I am trusting you to bring it in. And by bringing it in, the civilians are demonstrating the trust in their police as well. The article UC Santa Cruz 2022 sums it up by stating, and I quote, law enforcement agencies should embrace a guardian mindset to build public trust and legitimacy. Overly aggressive law enforcement strategies can potentially harm communities and do lasting damage to public trust. End quote. Madam moderator, trust is a vital component in any relationship. If there is no trust, then we definitely have a, prob have a problem. An amnesty gives an opportunity for grace, and grace wins every time. Judges, let us, let us look more closely at the whole concept of gun amnesty in Dominica. According to an article by Nature All News dated September 2023, the government of Dominica afforded a one-month gun amnesty. During this amnesty, two guns were surrendered. Judges, two. Judges, our friends may try to give you, may try to convince you that the small number suggests that the method used is not the best. But this is what our Minister of National Security had to say. And I quote, We want to accept, while it is true, the number is very small. These are two illegal firearms that are off the streets that could have been used to commit a crime. End quote. From Dominical News Online, November 6, 2022. Madam Moderator, we know that a reduction is a reduction is a reduction. Two illegal guns off the streets are better than none at all. Judges, we need to bridge the gap that exists between the police and the public. By implementing gun amnesties, we are in fact providing an avenue for trust to be built between the two. My friends, this is the best method. Secondly, 
Gun amnesties are used by regional as well as international governments to effectively deal with the reduction of illegal firearm possession by getting stakeholders involved through much preparation that brought about education. Jamaica, Guyana, and Australia are three countries that have run successful amnesties within the last 10 years. What these countries have done is that they have saturated the environment with information about the amnesty prior to it being released. The law enforcement agencies ensured that the populace was well, ex well informed of what was expected to do. They engaged, they provided community engagement and public events which talked to them about the possible risk, about the possible risk associated with it. Caribbean, Caribbean National Weekly, in an article published September 2015, states, and I quote, Days into Guyana's one-month amnesty, officials reported an estimated 1,000 rounds of ammunition, end quote. As it relates to Jamaica's amnesty, Jamaica Information Services, dated 2022, states that, and I quote, a total of 101 firearms and 3,000 rounds of ammunition were handed over to authorities under a two-week gun amnesty, end quote. Australia reported a total of 57,000 guns under a three-month amnesty in an article published by Two-Way, March of 2018. Do you see what education does? When people are well informed, they are more willing to act in a manner that is deemed appropriate and beneficial to all. According to the Australian government, 2023, in their permanent National Firearms Amnesty and Null Report, they highlighted the fact that gun amnesties was done through much preparation and not in isolation. Stakeholder engagement is crucial to running a successful gun amnesty. Therefore, they employed the use of crime stoppers to assist them in getting the information out there. Furthermore, they implemented the amnesty in two phases. Phase one focused on encouraging people to bring in their illegal guns. And phase two focused on encouraging people to anonymously report those who they knew had illicit firearms. During the campaign, Crime Stoppers hosted community events and promotional events in communities across Australia to encourage people to safely share what they knew about illicit guns. It was Kofi Annan who said, knowledge is power, power is liberating, education is the premise of progress in every society. Judges, any program that involves educating the public is the best method. We admit, that although our last amnesty didn't yield much fruit, it in itself was not a failure. It was the marketing that left much to be desired. If law enforcement had used influencers like Asa Bantans to create songs and videos about the amnesty, then more people would have known about the amnesty and they would have felt encouraged to bring in their weapons. If posters were put up in common places such as Jolids, people would have been educated and they would have felt more willing to peacefully bring in their weapons. There was a need for community outreach programs and much more advertisement. This would have helped the public gain more information on the amnesty and so much more would have been collected. Still, we say that this is the best method to reduce the illegal firearm possession in Dominica as it builds trust and gets stakeholders involved as they seek to educate the public on illegal firearms in a peaceful manner in our society. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Elianette Jolly, our mm. first speaker from the proposing side. And Elianette spoke for nine minutes and 47 seconds, well within her time. Our first speaker for the opposing side from ITSS is Miss Amelia Charles. <laughs> I invite her to come forward and I will tell her when to begin speaking. Okay. 
moderator, esteemed judges, respected audience, distinguished opponents, a pleasant afternoon. I rise for the opposition of the moot, gun amnesties, and the best way to reduce the illegal firearm possession issue in Dominica. Recognizing the increasing rate of gun-related violence in Dominica, my capable colleague and I acknowledge the urgent need for effective strategies to curtail this issue. However, we express great reservations regarding the efficiency of gun amnesties as the best solution. Before delving into the argument supporting our stance, let's establish a clear understanding of the key terms. Gun amnesties refers to a period for non-prosecution that allows people to surrender their illegal or unregistered firearms without fear of legal jeopardy or being prosecuted, according to Loop Caribbean News. The phrase, best way, according to Collins Dictionary, refers to the most effective, most successful, or the most suitable actions you can take to achieve something successfully. According to Legal Match, illegal firearms are any type of gun that uses an explosive charge, but are often banned or prohibited by gun laws because they are unregistered or a danger to the public. Reduce, according to Cambridge Dictionary, is to become or to make something smaller in size or amount. Therefore, the mood can be restated as implementing a non-prosecution for individuals to surrender unregistered or illegal firearms is not the most effective or the most successful method for reducing unlawful ownership of firearms in the hands of the public. In reinforcing our position, my colleague and I will elaborate on the following key points. One, gun amnesties prove highly ineffective within the specific context of Dominica and the broader Caribbean region for reducing illegal possession of firearms. Two, this strategy offers a temporary solution accompanied by heightened risk associated with individuals exploiting the program. Three, we posit that alternative and more effective approaches exist for reducing the issue of illegal firearm possession. Four, gun amnesties fail to address the broader issue at hand, which is the illegal possession of firearms. Respected audience, let me draw your attention to the timeless wisdom captured in Aesop's fable, The Crow and the Pitcher. This narrative unfolds the tale of a thirsty crow discovering a pitcher of water at its bottom. The crow attempts to access the water by dropping small pebbles into the pitcher, only to realize that the water level remains low. After several attempts, the crow starts dropping larger pebbles until the water level rises, allowing the crow to quench its thirst. Madame Moderator, I invite you to consider the parallels between this fable and our present discourse on gun amnesties. Much like the crow's initial attempts with small pebbles, gun amnesties are small-scale responses to the colossal challenge of illegal firearm possession. However, if we fail to emulate the crow and opt for solutions of greater effectiveness, we will place our nation in a very unfortunate position. This leads to our first point of contention. Gun amnesties prove highly ineffective within the specific context of Dominica and the broader Caribbean region. The voluntary nature of this program often falls short of convincing criminals and even law-abiding citizens to surrender their illegal weapons. Madame Moderator, let's engage in a moment of candid reasoning. Can we realistically expect the ghetto youths in Grand Bay and Stock Farm to willingly surrender their weapons? We have to be realistic about this situation. Though God amnesties may be an approach, we are not convinced that this is the most suitable approach within our context. The debate club of ITSS conducted a face-to-face -face interview with Corporal Giselle Ishmael, who is in charge of firearms collection at the Criminal Investigative Department branch within our country. The key data collected from the interview reveals the first gun amnesty initiative in Dominica in 1997 proved to be futile as zero guns were surrendered. In the second attempt in 2023, only two guns were surrendered, one in October and one in November. Although the amnesty period was extended for two months, can you believe only two guns were surrendered? 
In our interview, we also received data on other strategies used by the police to reduce illegal firearm possession. In 2022, an applauding total of 92 firearms were seized by joint forces between the Dominica Police Force and the Port Customs officials. In 2023, 35 firearms were also seized due to operations led by the Dominica Police Force. Respected judges, let's do a fair comparison. Two firearms surrendered compared to 35 firearms seized. In other words, two illegal guns removed from the streets compared to 35. In your calculation, which strategy proves to be more effective in reducing the illegal possession of firearms? We all know the answer to this. The respected Corporal Ismail further commented on gun amnesty initiatives, I quote, I do not believe this is a very effective strategy in Dominica for reducing the possession of illegal firearms as the people are not coming forward, end quote. My respected audience, within other Caribbean islands, gun amnesty programs were highly ineffective. An article released in 2022 entitled Failed Gun Amnesty in Turks and Caicos Islands reported, I quote, No firearms were surrendered during the month-long firearm and ammunition amnesty. There is little trust in the police force and members of the public retain the fear and concern that coming forward may get them into trouble, end quote. In Antigua Newsroom reported 2022, I quote, I am amazed that the authorities are still focusing on gun amnesty. Can't they see it is not working? Is it that our law enforcement officers and lawmakers have run out of ideas on how to retrieve illegal firearms from off the road? End quote. The main idea here is that the success of gun amnesties relies heavily on the willingness of the public to participate. However, Within Dominica, where we all know each other, and every Jack and Jill has a friend on the force, there is widespread distrust of law enforcement and information leaking out. As such, criminals, by their rebellious nature, will be very reluctant to surrender their guns in fear of misuse of surrendered information. Therefore, my esteemed opponents, can we genuinely label gun amnesties as the best strategy to reduce illegal firearm possession? I think not. To fortify our position, let's turn our attention to the wisdom shared by international radio personality Craig Bruce, who remarked, temporary solutions often become permanent problems. This statement resonates strongly with the nature of gun amnesties as it is a temporary solution and comes with heightened risk, potential, potential risks, such as individuals exploiting the program. Respected audience, gun amnesty is a temporary fix and a critical question arises. What happens after the amnesty period? As a nation, to reduce illegal possession of firearms, we must adopt a more ongoing and proactive strategy. Gun amnesties are temporary and the issue will not reduce if we fail to employ consistent approaches. Furthermore, we want this audience to take note of the high risks associated with gun amnesty programs as criminals only see an opportunity to exploit the program and means to dispose of weapons involved in criminal activities without facing legal repercussions. Madame Moderator, this poses a major threat to public safety. The Deputy Commissioner of Police in St. Kitts and Nevis, Cromwell Henry, shared his views on gun amnesty programs in a 2023 press release. I quote, We have seen in other jurisdictions where it is done, and the criminals have used it to their advantage. They would bring in an old gun, get paid, and then go and buy a better one. End quote. Additionally, the Prime Minister of Jamaica also weighed in on the matter, as reported by the Jamaica Information Service in 2022. I quote, it has surpassed my expectations, but there are still many more, thousands more illegal firearms and ammunition in our country, end quote. Therefore, my esteemed audience, we cannot and we refuse to label this strategy as the most effective when the criminals are holding on tightly to their guns. My worthy opponents, the data speaks for itself. Gun amnesties has failed to reduce illegal firearm possession in Dominica, Jamaica, St. Kitts and other islands.
and yet you stand here and tell us we place all our eggs in one basket. I beg we do not. I thank you. Thank you very much, Amelia. Amelia spoke for 10 minutes exactly. Our next speaker will be from the proposing side, and that's our second speaker for the proposing side. And that speaker will be Miss Kishma Theofield. Kishma, come to the mic, and then I will tell you when you can begin. Let's clap, clap for Kishma, we forgot. Oh, OK. <laughs> Madam moderator, judges, my most esteemed colleague, my friends on the other side of this debate, and to the audience, good afternoon. We hold the stance that gun amnesties are the best way to reduce the illegal gun possession issue in Dominica, and I will discuss why that is. My colleague has already defined the key terms, and I hold true to these definitions. She has pointed out that gun amnesties help bridge the gap between the public and the police by building trust. She also brought to the fore the strategies that international countries like Australia have used to effectively run gun amnesties. I shall seek to debunk any unfounded arguments that our opponents of this debate may attempt to put forward by discussing, one, rates are not as effective because people sell out the police, two, Gun amnesties are a method of community policing, and three, it is cost-effective and educational. Firstly, we need to acknowledge that there are illegal guns in Dominica, and we cannot bury our heads in the sand about this issue. The Office of the Prime Minister Press Room, dated September 2023, stated that Dominica has recorded 14 murders for the year as of September 27, 2023. According to Chief of Police, Daniel Carbon, eight of these crimes inv involve the use of illegal firearms. Our opponents may argue that a gun amnesty is not the best way to prevent gun violence. However, our debate here today is singularly about the issue of reducing illegal gun possession in Dominica and not about gun violence. Therefore, I shall seek to establish why gun amnesties are best in dealing with the reduction of illegal gun possession in Dominica. We know that compared to other methods, gun amnesties present a peaceful approach to addressing the reduction of illegal possessed firearms. Imagine the outcome if the authorities were to use an iron rod to reduce the number of illegal firearms in the country. People would retaliate with violence and protests, and even develop hatred towards the police, re resulting in individual, individuals retaliating and refusing to cooperate with the police when future events or crimes occur. Methods such as police raids are severe. When people's personal space is being invaded, whether or not they have something to hide, they feel uncomfortable and they feel threatened, and this might result in people retaliating. Let's be honest for a moment as you answer this question. Have you ever gotten a call which informed you that the police were out in a particular area doing spot checks or searching vehicles? Do you know how many people call their friends to tell them that the police are out and they should not transverse the road until they get an all clear because their registration or license are expired? My friends, we have received video footage of the police on their way up to Grand Bay to do random searches. Can you imagine what it would be like if the police were to do more raids? As soon as people see the police, they'd call their friends to tell them, hide the guns. Madam moderator, illegal gun holders would automatically make it more difficult for their guns to be found. They would find even more innovative means to conceal them. And when people feel that they are not trusted, they will not talk to the police. Already the mentality of snitches get stitches exists amongst our populace. How much worse it would be if police were to do raids all over the island. 
We can therefore conclude that polytrates have proven to be not as effective, thus forcing the authorities to consider a more effective method in the form of amnesties. Secondly, Madam Moderator, do you know that gun amnesties are in fact community policing? It is a method that the police are using to help us to help ourselves. Well, my friends, by using gun amnesties, which is the best method of reducing illegal gun possession, we are in fact helping to keep our country safe. When people take responsibility for their safety, they enjoy their peace even more. When people are actively involved in policing, they will seek to be their brother's keeper. Judges, we are not saying that the other ways may not produce the desired outcome, but amnesties are the best way to deal with reduction of illegal gun possession. We do not want people to be afraid of the police. We want them to trust them, to cooperate them, to cooperate with them, to talk with them. The Minister of National Security, in a DNO News article dated September 2023, stated that, and I quote, the fight against illegal firearms is not one that can be fought by the authorities alone, end quote. The long and short of it is, we need each other, and by implementing a gun amnesty, we are in fact using the best method to deal with illegal gun possession in Dominica. Thirdly, Madam Moderator, in our research, we came across a number of Caribbean countries that are implementing gun amnesties for this year, 2024. Some countries, like St. Kitts, are considering how they should tweak it to suit their needs. And Antigua undertook theirs in 2022, according to Caribbean Times 2022. According to Loop Caribbean News, dated February 4th, 2024, St. Vincent and the Grenadines will introduce their gun amnesty from March 1st to May 31st, 2024. The St. Vincent Police Force will take gun amnesty discussions to the community during the month of February. It is hoped that by doing these outreach sessions, the public will be sensitized on the importance of an amnesty and will see the potential to trust the police by bringing in illegal guns. According to Caribbean News Weekly, Anguilla held their amnesty from January 26, 2024 to February 12, 2024. Madam Moderator, these small island states have recognized the constraints with which they are faced. One such constraint is the issue of small budgets for dealing with illegal gun possession. They must therefore be innovative and use peaceful methods that will produce results in the most cost-effective way. With limited Coast Guard resources and limited police resources on the island, how do we expect to reduce illegal gun possession? Tell me how, but by amnesties. The gun amnesty gets the, street off in a, gets the guns off the street in a calm and voluntary manner which prevents the citizens from retaliating and feeling like they have no rights. It gets the firearms off the streets without brutality, and this is what makes the gun amnesty the best way to reduce the use of illegal guns in Dominica. I have quoted many words from our dearest ministers, but before I go, I would like to share one more quote that we, are that we strive to achieve to benefit our country. Our Prime Minister said in his, con in his song, and I quote, We can see who, but no guns, no violence. Thank you very much, Kishma. Kishma spoke for seven minutes and 32 seconds. Our final speaker in this the first um, round of, of this afternoon is Ms. Joannel Sira, who is speaking for the opposing school, ITSS. I invite Joannel to come to the podium. Respected audience, the famous American psychologist Abraham Maslow articulated, if the only tool you have is a hammer, you tend to see every problem as a nail. This profound statement captures a concept known as the law of instrument, emphasizing the tendency to rely on familiar or preferred tools. While these tools may be useful, they're overused merely to approaching problems in ways that are not always beneficial 
and in some cases, even detrimental. Thus, in connection with our discussion today, the gun amnesties are presented as a solution. It is imperative to recognize that alternative approaches exist for addressing the issue of illegal firearm possession within Dominica. Just as Maso advocated for a very toolkit to approach challenges, we firmly believe in the importance of adopting multiple strategies that go beyond the singular focus of gun amnesties. Esteemed audience, we want to bring to your attention an article by the U.S. Department of State titled U.S. Caribbean Cooperation to Stop Firearm Trafficking in 2023. The article states that the United States and the Caribbean islands have partnered to reduce the illegal possession of firearms through various approaches, such as ongoing cooperation, training, establishment of the gun intelligence units, and capacity building support to increase ports and border security. Additionally, the Caribbean Firearm Study, published in 2023, proposed the following strategies, I quote, develop search capacity in customs and practice frequent policing to address sudden increases in firearm availability, ensure consistent, transparent, and accountable firearm licensing procedures, and implement standardized firearms controls, including policies, laws, and regulations. Furthermore, in the interview with Corporal Ismail of the CID Firearms Department, she suggested education for the public, stringent laws, and advanced technology for detection. My esteemed audience, these alternative strategies are more proactive measures that are needed to solve the issue at its core. As a nation, our firearm possession issues cannot depend solely on gun amnesty efforts. We must adopt a proactive stance by investing in equipment, technology, and human resource capacities that can be used to prevent or reduce the illegal possession of firearms in our country. Let's take example from these other islands in 2022. Nation News reported about 35 guns and over 700 rounds of ammunition were seized in the port of Bridgetown, Barbados, as a result of strategic police operations. The Jamaica Gleaner 2024 reported, I quote, more than 119 illegal guns and hundreds of assorted rounds of ammunition were seized as a result of joint intelligence operations between Jamaican and American law enforcement, end quote. Respected judges, wouldn't you agree that these alternative measures yield greater success? It is the truth and nothing but the truth. Gun amnesties fail to reduce illegal firearm possession. Finally, my esteemed audience, gun amnesties fail to address the broader issue at hand, which is the illegal possession of firearms. While this strategy may result in the recovery of a few weapons, it does not address the fundamental problem of individuals possessing firearms illegally. The focus is on collecting existing weapons rather than preventing new ones from entering illegal circulation. As such, this cannot be the best option when it fails to address the root cause. Respected judges, just last month, Dominica News Online 2024 reported that a former minister of government who is also currently employed in the office of the prime minister was caught red-handed importing illegal firearms accessories into our country. Respected, respected audience, the million-dollar question is, did the gun amnesty, which was conducted a mere month before, deter the citizen of high standing? Obviously, it did not. Not even a citizen who should be of exemplary conduct was impacted by the gun amnesty initiative that took place two months back. And my worthy opponents stand here and tell us that the young men of Tarish Pit and Silver Lake will be impacted by such a program. This is appalling. 
respected judges, con amnesty does not in no shape or form reduce illegal firearm possession in Dominica. Rather, it encourages criminals and even supposedly law-abiding citizens to go out, get their guns illegally, and do their crime. Because there comes a time when they can give it up without facing any consequences. My worthy opponents, this does not add up. Gun amnesty presents no preventative measures, nor does it protect innocent citizens. Then you see the and say, this is the best solution, while guns are still being acquired and circulated within Dominica, endangering the lives of everyone here. Hypocrisy! As such, my capable colleague and I agree that implementing a non-prosecution period for individuals to surrender unregistered or illegal guns is not the most effective or most successful method for reducing unlawful ownership of firearms in the hands of the public. In closing, the opposing team asks, is this the best way? When the strategy has proven to be highly ineffective in Dominica and across the region, we ask, is this the best way? Addressing an urgent issue with a risky and temporary solution. We cry, is this the best way? When there are other effective approaches to reduce the issue. We plead, is this the best way? When Sally fails to address the issue at hand, my colleague and I stand resolute that this is not the best way. The opposition has rested its case. I thank you. Okay, thank you very much, Joannelle. Joannelle spoke for 7 minutes and 11 seconds. So we are here this afternoon with uh, the topic, gun amnesties are the best way to reduce the illegal firearm possession issue in Dominica. Dominica Grammar School has been proposing that topic with Ilianet Jolly as the first speaker and Kishma Theophil as the second speaker. Opposing that topic is ITSS, Isaiah Thomas Secondary School. Amelia Charles is our first speaker, and Joanne L. Sarah has been our second speaker. The sponsors for this afternoon's quarterfinals have been Domlek, Lindomat, Fine Foods Inc. through KFC, the National Cooperative Credit Union, and Josephine Gabriel and Company Limited as our main sponsors. I could say our platinum sponsors. And also assisting with sponsorship, we have um, Q95 Radio, DBS Radio, UWI Global Campus, Freeman Consulting Group, LLC, Dominica News Online, Vibian TV, HHV Witchurch and Company Limited. HHV Witchurch is sponsoring the tokens for the judges this afternoon. Lovely Things, Lovely Things is sponsoring the gift for our best speaker this afternoon. Also sponsoring is fin Finance Focus, Alliance Francaise de la Dominique, The Watering Can, Joshua Lloyd and Carincia Joseph Lloyd, Vive Ikea, Crazy Carrots, Jordan Jerome Photography. And of course, this entire series is being brought in partnership with the Ministry of Education, Human Resource Planning, Vocational Training and National Excellence, the Dominica State College's Literary and Debate Society, as well as Exquisite Events and Rental. All right, so the students have already started planning for the rebuttal. I will just remind the audience that uh, we are going to give them five minutes of complete silence so they can plan in a little bit. And after we come back, we will have the first speaker from the proposing team, Ileana Jolly, giving the rebuttal on behalf of the Dominica Grammar School for five minutes. And then after her, we'll have Amelia Charles of Isaiah Thomas Secondary School giving the rebuttal for it's three minutes each, for three minutes for the Isaiah Thomas Secondary School, the opposing side. So I'm going to be quiet now, and so is my audience, for five minutes, and Ms. Hunter, who's assisting me with the timekeeping, is going to put five minutes on the clock for us, starting now.
Okay, our five minutes is up. And so it is now time for us to hear those rebuttals. Each team has three minutes to present. Our first speaker is from the proposing team at Dominica Grammar School, and that is Miss Ilianette Jolly. I invite Ilianette to come and give Grammar School's rebuttal. Judges, the arguments that our opponents have brought about is equivalent to raking, to raking leaves in the wind. Pointless. Madam Moderator, many times we have been told, if you fail to plan, then you plan to fail. Our last amnesty in Dominica was not a fail, but it was the failure, the failure was in the marketing. It was poorly done. We would have seen much more drastic results if we followed the examples of Australia, Jamaica, and other countries. The first speaker said that in two instances, in Dominica, we ran amnesties and they were unsuccessful. But let us think for a second. How many people even knew there was an amnesty going on? Not much. There was not much marketing done. There was not much, not much preparation done. Obviously, we would not collect much guns. If people don't know something is going on, how are they supposed to participate? Tell me how. The first speaker mentioned that we should be realistic. But come on now, we are being realistic. Let me again remind you of our successful countries. Jamaica, 101 firearms and 3,000 rounds of ammunition have been turned in into authorities under a two-week gun amnesty. Two weeks! Guyana, 1,000 rounds of ammunition have been turned into authorities. Australia, 57,000 um, illegal firearms were brought to authorities. How are we not being realistic? Tell me how. If gun amnesties work for these countries, why can't it work for us? Is there something wrong with us? No. We are smart, intelligent people. We can do this. If they can, we can too. Let us take into the examples of other successful countries which have run gun amnesties. The first speaker also said that it failed in other Caribbean countries and it, also failed in con in, it will also fail in Dominica as well. But this is simply not true. The second speaker, second speaker reinforced our point when she mentioned that um, an alternative to gun amnesty is to bring about education. But as you can see, I mentioned in my first point that one of Australia's method of preparation is educating the public. MST is already, um, uh, MST is already put in education. It's part of an amnesty. So that is not an, alter an alteration. It's not different. It's, it's part of an amnesty. The first speaker also enforced our point when she said that there is no trust between the police and the public. She is, of course, right. This is why we need an amnesty. We need to bridge the gap that exists between the civilians and the public. Ladies and gentlemen, we have provided you with concrete evidence why an amnesty is the best option in Dominica. I hope now that you see us strongly and believe as strongly as we do that gun amnesty is, in fact, the best. Thank you. Thank you, Elianet. Elianet spoke for three minutes and seven seconds. The first speaker on the opposing side for Isaiah Thomas Secondary School is Amelia Charles. Amelia will have three minutes to give the rebuttal on behalf of her school. Amelia? Madam moderator, respected judges, esteemed audience, you have heard it all. My worthy opponents have tried to sway you to an unjust side. There is major flaws in the argument. As a government, the main goal is to cater to the public, and in this situation, the goal is to keep the public safe. 
Is saving money better than ensuring national security? A reduced cost will include a measure that will only work in the short run while we are trying to keep our public safe in the long run. Is spending a bit more money such a task to keep our Dominica safe? My, additionally, my worthy opponent stated about gun amnesty initiative in other islands. As a nation, as a region, do we aim to have ineffective strategies lead our countries? The strategy of gun amnesty has proven to be futile. In Turks and Caicos, no firearms were surrendered. Let's compare the population to the amount of um, um, firearms that were surrendered. Take our country, for example, two guns compared to a population of over 70,000. Are we going to keep sending our police out to conduct ineffective strategies, putting their lives in danger and the lives of the public in danger? Trust. Gun amnesties are made for obtaining illegal or unregistered guns. This initiative, by right, is mainly targeted towards the criminals. Does a relationship between the police and the civilians affect the criminals from committing their crimes? Do you think that while the police is busy educating the public and talking to them and going out and making sure that they know that the criminals are actually going to stop doing what they do and committing malicious acts? But again, as Dominicans, how can we trust our police when they completely and over and over they keep on missing on letting us know things that are going on in our country? As we see this debate, it is essential to remember that data is very important when making any decision on a national level. The data regarding the use of gun amnesties in reducing illegal possession of firearms speaks volumes. The measure has failed in the past and in current times has shown no significant success rate. Therefore, how can we rely on a strategy to safeguard our community and the fact shows that it does not work? Esteemed audience, please remember that gun amnesties are temporary. If we are seeking measures to reduce this issue, we must employ those that are consistent. What our worthy opponents fail to mention is the subtle dangers gun amnesties present. This method encourages criminals to go get the illegal guns as they can one day bring them in without any legal jeopardies. Respected judges, my capable colleague and I confidently leave the decision for to keep a safe Dominica in your hands. I thank you. Thank you very much, Amelia. Amelia spoke for three minutes and 24 seconds. I now invite the judges under the charge of Mrs. Cara Schillingford Marsh to step outside. Um, um, there's a room for them, and my staff can, can lead them. Um, to that room. I think they know where the room is too. Um, Mrs. Marsh has judged here before. And so we will see you all in a few minutes. All right. So this afternoon, we have been talking about the topic, gun amnesties are the best way to reduce the illegal firearm possession issue in Dominica. Dominica Grammar School has proposed that topic, and we had Ilianet Jolly as our first speaker and Kishma Theophil as our second speaker. Opposing the topic are the students from Isaiah Thomas Secondary School. We have Amelia Charles as our first speaker and Joanna Serra as our second speaker. As I told you earlier, our platinum sponsors are Domlek, Lindomat, Fine Fruits for KFC, National Cooperative Credit Union, as well as Josephine Gabriel and Company Limited. The prizes this afternoon for, well not prizes, but gifts for the sponsors, are spons um, for the judges, sorry, are sponsored by HHB Witchers and Company, and the prize for the best speaker is sponsored by Lovely Things. While the judges are out for a bit, I do want to engage my audience members. And 
I want to ask a few questions uh, that have come up for me uh, during the debates. I listen to debates very intently and I take notes because I always learn things when I attend these debates. And so I really want to engage with members of my audience and find out what you think about certain things. I'm not sure if DBS has a roving mic that we can use. You do. Wonderful. Okay. So um, you wouldn't hear from the roving mic? Okay, but oh, but then people here will hear too. We'll hear from there. Fantastic. Thank you. So, members of the audience, and I like that because my teachers always go at it too, like as if they're the ones debating. I like that. <laughs> uh, and my first question for you is well, we heard a lot this afternoon. Like I said, I took a lot of notes. So, the Dominica Grammar School spoke about um, the amnesties will build trust with the public and the police. They spoke about the fact that we get stakeholders involved and there's a diverse group of stakeholders who can bring awareness to the issues. They spoke about the fact that other islands use amnesties. I'm hesitant to say the word successfully because they did say that there was an issue whether that was successful or not. Both sides talked about that. Um, and they also talked about being cost effective. We had the Isaiah Thomas Secondary School speaking about the effect, ineffectiveness of it, speaking about that it's a temporary solution, that the there are alternative approaches that exist, that the illegal possession of firearms is still an issue even after the amnesty is complete. So my first question for members of my and the two students were saying, so I'm saying it too. My esteemed members of the audience uh, is, what are some fundamental issues of trust that exist between the Dominica police force and the Dominican public? Can you tell me, what are some of the fundamental issues of trust that exist between the Dominica police force and the members of the Dominica public? Anyone? No, don't make my thing go dry. We're live, you know. <laughs> we are live. So there are no issues of trust. Everybody trusts the police completely? No, exactly. So I want to have some, um, some idea why. So um, if, if somebody would help me from... Uh, Miss Hunter, could you help me by taking the microphone from um, the DBS team as well as the, Kyrie, um, the Q95 team and Vibian team? Uh -huh. And... Uh, allowing the students to share their views. So somebody said, no, we don't trust the police. Why is that? Why is there an issue of trust for the police? Yes, my dear. Anyone? Teachers, can you help me? Maybe get things warmed up? My question is, what are some fundamental issues of trust that exist between the Dominica police force and the Dominican public? Parents, you can help me as well. Thank you, Miss Commodore. <laughs> okay. um, good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon. Um, very good debate, ladies, on either side. Mm -hmm. um, I think, in my opinion, it could be that some people are afraid of their, um, the information that they bring forward being mishandled, or that, you know, like the girls from the grammar school said, snitches get stitches. So if they bring in information and then it gets out to the public that, oh, well, Ilianet told on you right. that Ilianet might be in danger. Right, right. So that may be some of the issues of trust. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? What are some of the issues of trust? Mrs. Ms. Hunter, could you help with the um, Robin mic, please? Okay, good afternoon, everybody. Um, I think there's a lack of professionalism by the members of the police force. Because sometimes you see they investigate crimes. And then you have pictures um, being WhatsApp all over the place. And I mean, if there's supposed to be a level of professionalism, if you are the police and if you want people to trust you. So I cannot make a report and chances are you're going to send a picture that mm -hmm. Mrs. Joseph was the one mm -hmm. who reported you. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm not going to take that risk. Mm -hmm. So there needs... There needs to be a level of professionalism mm -hmm. among the police officers. Mm -hmm. Okay, so they need to go back, train them, do something. But that lack of professionalism. I agree. I agree with that. Problem. You know, and I know that um, somebody else wants to speak. I agree with that. Uh, you report maybe there's a, a disturbance in your community, a domestic um, violence, um, and they go on, and sometimes they tell the person precisely who called. 
you know, uh, a neighbor with a small voice call. I mean, how many neighbors with a small voice now? Even if they didn't say, but did you have to say that the neighbor had a small voice? You, you know what I mean? Yes, miss. All right. I also think the problem that might exist is the manner in which they approach people. So sometimes something may have occurred and they come down like one of our um, debaters said with an iron rod. So they do not come with this approach that is willing to make people to speak, but they come down so harshly that initially people are going to be closing up because they realize, whoa, I'm going to, it seems I'm going to get punished regardless of what I say. Mm -hmm. So I might as well clam up and be punished regardless. Anyway, I might mm -hmm. as well just go ahead with it. Mm -hmm. So sometimes it's the approach they use. Um, it is better to approach somebody with a gentle, in a gentle manner initially, mm -hmm. and then afterwards, if that doesn't work, then you'll come down mm -hmm. harder on them. Mm -hmm. Very good. Anyone else? Anybody from the Isaiah Thomas side wants to make a comment? Miss, thank you. And students, I urge you to participate as well. I do not have any prizes from Crazy Carrot right now. Good afternoon, but I everyone. Do welcome. <laughs> yes, Miss, go ahead. Good afternoon, everyone. In addition to what was said, we must remember also we live in a very small society. Mm -hmm. And as one of our debaters pointed out, every Jack and Jill knows somebody on the police force. Mm -hmm. And one of the um, ladies on the next side was speaking about professional. Mm -hmm. So sometimes the husband on the police force might tell the wife who works at Fresh Market, sorry, Fresh Market, mm -hmm. and that might spread across the Fresh Market, Fresh Market, mm -hmm. and then all across the Rose Dominica, the Rose mm -hmm. Market. Mm -hmm. Yes. So because of our small population, and we all have a cousin, a friend, and we tend to speak a lot. Mm -hmm. Dominicans don't know how to confide. You have a confidentiality, no. no? Mm -mm. We have zero, well, some of us, most of us have zero confidentiality, so mm -hmm. that's another issue as mm -hmm. well. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, anybody else wants to make the contribution on what are some of the fundamental issues of trust that exist between the Dominica Police Force uh, and uh, the public? Yes, we have a student here, Miss Hunter. Um, well, it's like the way they dress when they have, okay, you know, the task force, the way the task force dress. When I just be going home from school, sometimes they just be doing searches by auto trade. Mm -hmm. And they have their big guns and mm -hmm. they have the task force and they have their face mask up. So mm -hmm. all that does make people afraid. I myself does be afraid even if I don't have nothing on me. me. me but too. I just be afraid. And it, it does I'm usually like, ready to surrender and I don't yeah, have anything. <laughs> and it, it makes people intimidated. So like they kind of, they don't want to mm -hmm. engage with the police and all. Mm -hmm. Very good, very good. Okay, so my second question involves the statistics. So we got, funnily, similar statistics from both teams, but saying, trying to tell us two different things. So we're getting numbers, and then we're being, on one side we're being told, that means that's not effective. And on the other hand, we're getting numbers and we're being told that means it's working. So which is it really? So my question is, what do the statistics given of gun amnesties programs in the wider Caribbean prove or disprove about the effectiveness of our gun amnesties? My question again, what do the statistics given on gun amnesty programs in the wider Caribbean prove or disprove about the effectiveness of our gun amnesty programs? That's my question. You understand my question, right? What do the statistics really say? Are they saying that gun amnesties are working or are they saying that gun amnesties are not working? Okay, I see we have someone. I said I was not talking this afternoon, really? but because you ask about statistics, I have to speak. Before I address the wider Caribbean, let me first narrow down to Dominica. So when we interviewed the Corporal Ishmael, who is head of the firearms department at the CID department of Dominica, we got some um, statistics from the data thingy, which showed that in the first amnesty which was conducted, zero guns were submitted. Right. And that was years back. So maybe 97. because of that failure, mm -hmm. yes, they gave up on the initiative. Then recently they came back and they implemented it. And it was supposed to be for one month. 
But in the first month, only one was surrendered. So the Minister of National Security said, you know, maybe let's lengthen it extend to see, it. extend mm -hmm. it to see if more guns will be submitted and surrendered. And only one other gun was surrendered thereafter. But if we look in the broader Caribbean region, Jamaica, well, the population is in the millions, about three million, and look at the size of Jamaica and their massive crime rate. Mm -hmm. And about, I think, 87 or something, guns were surrendered in their recent amnesty. Then Turks and Caicos had an amnesty, zero guns were submitted. Antigua had a debate about um, gun amnesty, but the chief was not for it. The chief actually said in one of the um, interviews that he would not implement a gun amnesty in Antigua because it would actually encourage the um, criminals because he was saying that in some other jurisdiction, they implement, I think it was St. Lucia who implemented a gun for cash amnesty so the criminals could bring in their guns and they would get cash. But what happened is that the criminals were bringing all guns, fake guns, all kind of type of guns, get the monies, then they would go out and buy better guns. <laughs> so it's a lot of statistics, but generally it proved that gun amnesty is not a proactive and effective initiative for reducing illegal ownership of guns. All right. We have a parent here who wants to make a contribution concerning what the statistics prove or disprove. I think, first of all, we should watch the reason behind we um, our, let me see, the reason behind having illegal guns. So my issue here is um, we might say which one is the best, which one. In my opinion, I do believe at first I did not believe that it would have, been, it would have worked. I was against the idea, but after listening to both um, debaters, I do believe that gun amnesty has a greater effect. If you watch the current countries, as she was saying, that it had recently had a, the um, um, amnesty for um, cash, it had one recently also, I think they were giving rewards practically. So you turn in your gun, you get something written. We cannot say criminal civilian. I don't like the term criminal civilians um, because we are putting a certain category of people like Tarish Bay, Grand Bay, in a certain, certain um, context compared to the normal. And sometimes people have guns for the certain different reasons you might not. So I feel like we should look for the, what do you call it, the bottom line, the reasoning behind everybody's action. That's always my thing. You look for the reasoning behind the actions and then move forward. So. In regards to the Caribbean, um, as who, um, I think Alien had said it, we need to maybe do more advertising, invest in our amnesty, who speak to the youth, Adam people like Asa who speak to the youth. Because I remember this famous um, Jamaican singer when they had their um, thing, he brought out his gun on stage, and that had a great impact on the amnesty for Jamaica as well. So. Maybe we should also be, we look out for the advertisement of it and we will get a greater impact for Dominica. Because we compare ourselves to Jamaica is really wild in a certain way because the amount of um, people in Jamaica and the, the amount of people in Dominica and the reasoning behind the different levels of crime we have in the different Caribbean countries. Well, so I feel. One, but we have. Yeah, we, we have um, Antigua examples as well. We again, advertisement. Advertisement is important because, again, um, we usually do not know these things are happening. And that goes back to the first question about the police and the um, civilians, not criminals, police and um, civilians. We usually don't know when the police is doing something. I did not know Dominica had a gun amnesty until after when the results came out. So we need to start investigating and doing our due diligence and research, and educating our youth, educating our, um, the people of Dominica, and then things, I believe, they will have an increase in the results. Mm -hmm. All right. Does anybody else want to talk about what the statistics prove or disprove? Grammar school on your end, what do the statistics say or, or not say based on, on, on um, what the school provided? Uh, amnesty is working or not working based on the I statistics? Think, I think amnesties can work, but there needs to be um, community engagement. 
And that is one of the things that we noticed in our research with Australia. Prior to putting out their amnesty, they actually go to different districts and they hold meetings with their different areas. So perhaps in Dominica, that is one of the things because I did a little survey in our staff room and in two classes. And in the staff room, I asked about 20 people whether or not they had heard of the gun amnesty. And most people had heard about it after the fact. Mm. As a matter of fact, they heard about it when there was a breaking at the police station in St. Joseph and they had stolen guns. <laughs> so that was when they found out. So most people didn't know. As a matter of fact, some people did not even know what a gun amnesty was, believe it or not. Mm. So that's one of the things that needs to be done. As part of the, the gun amnesty program, mm. there needs to be community outreach. And like one of the debaters said, yeah. the stakeholders, stakeholders need to get on board. It cannot just be, because one of the ministers said that, it cannot just be the police alone to do it. Mm -hmm. But the police needs the community, and by going out in the community, they make themselves appear human, and people will realize, oh, they're just like us. We but you can cannot engage. beat people last night and come to today. Well. <laughs> I mean, we're going back to the trust right. thing and, and the confidentiality right. thing and the professionalism thing. So this, this stakeholder engagement uh, is not yes. a, a one-time thing. Right, know? it has to be continuous. Yeah, I'm meeting yeah. the police at five or something else. And I don't know if they're listening now, but, but really and truly, <laughs> there's a lot of work that has to be done. I'm going to be doing a, a, a seminar on communication. There's a lot right. of work that has to be done in terms of communication with the public. So it cannot be when you have your police week and you want me to pay, take part in your raffle, then you come out to the community and you smile, and for 364 days later, you have, you have faces buoy driving around town. It doesn't, it doesn't make right. sense, right? It has to be so there has to be that engagement throughout yes. for everything. And so when it comes to programs like what you're suggesting, having stakeholder consultation programs, then they're more approachable, you see? Then, then, then they're more approachable. We have a, a, a comeback? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. One of the schools, one of the runner-up schools in the three debates, two today and one tomorrow, the one with the highest number of points, the school with the highest number of points, will go on to the right. semi-finals. Okay. Okay, so this is just some information. All right, thank you very much. My next question for you, and Mrs. Um, Jajak, if you could find out what's keeping the judges, I'd be very grateful. It's okay. time for them to come back in. Um, my next question for you is, does the relinquishing of the two guns in Dominica's program this year mean success or failure? So we had, the, we had the, two, the two schools, same statistic, two guns we got. One in the first instance and another one after we extended. And the minister told us that it was successful because that is two guns off the street. What do you think? Do you think two guns after the amnesty position, um, period was extended, is success? Do you agree with the minister? Children, adults, yes, no? Do we agree? Children, speak up. Yes, tell us, do you agree that two is, is successful? Go ahead. I wouldn't say it's successful, but I would say... Sorry, start again. I would I would say it's successful in the way that it's uh, it's going to be a slow approach for it to get more guns mm -hmm. acquired using the amnesty. But I would say it's a step forward if we want to continue using the amnesty. Then yes, mm -hmm. in that terms, then it would be a success. Mm -hmm. The two guns. Mm -hmm. Okay, a parent wants to make a contribution. Oh, go ahead and then the parent. I also think that the amnesty was successful because having two guns off the street is better than having them in the street, anyways. Okay, the parent is behind you. you pass the microphone. Well, I think it is successful because the last time they had it, it was zero. So now it is two. <laughs> so if we so have that's from two zero more than they to had two, last time in and then one gun is too much. So now if we have two out of the street, <laughs> it is successful. And then as Kishma and Elenet said that if we continue to communicate, we, come to, we continue to do more policing work. 
the police and the civilians are, are able to um, do things together, then we will get a better results than one, let's say one is against one another. If you come like a sergeant or what we call it, Saddam Hussein. You use, you come like a sergeant. <laughs> how, how, we call, how you come in like Saddam Hussein. Mm -hmm. I am not going to accept you. But if you come in a gentle, polite, then we can able to communicate. But if mm -hmm. we cannot communicate, there's nothing. Nothing would work. Mm -hmm. Very good. What about this side? Do we agree that two guns was a success or do we think that it was not? You're talking out of the mic. I want to pass the mic to you now. Do you think that two guns was a success? For, pro, for the program. What do you think? Anyone? Two guns was successful? Yes? No? I don't think that two guns was a success. I think that two guns is a dismal failure. I am a citizen. I have the right to speak. I vote. Um, I think that two guns for the effort that was put into this thing is a dismal, shameful failure. I agree with the Dominica Grammar School that a lot more work needed to be done in terms of marketing. I agree with the Dominica Grammar School that a lot more work had to be done in terms of stakeholder engagement. I agree with Isaiah Thomas Secondary School that there could be more than one approach. Um, so the alternatives need to be looked into in order to be able to do more than one thing at a time. But I think that Two guns, I would bury my head in the sand. I would cry for months. This is embarrassing. Two guns is humiliating. And there's no way you take that and wear that as a trophy in my book. And I agree. Zero in 1997 and two in 2024 is an improvement. But come on. This is 2024. According to one of our famous singers, I mean, come on. Eh? All right, um, and that's my personal opinion. Eh? Do you know very well? Okay, uh, we're moving on now to my final question. I hope the judges are coming back soon. What are alternative methods of gun control that are proving to be successful? So Isaiah Thomas, you told us that there were alternatives, but I don't remember hearing much of what those alternatives were. I was busy writing, so maybe I missed some of them, but I know that our second speaker, Sarah, was um, telling us that there were um, alternatives that could be used, maybe in conjunction or even separately. Sarah, could you point out some of those from your research that you and your colleague would have done in terms of alternative um, ones? Because I know you have the research. So you can start us off and then somebody else can go ahead. Okay, we so had- Give us some ideas. We had ongoing cooperation, mm -hmm. we had training, we had establishment of the gun intelligence units, we had capacity building support to increase port and border security. Mm -hmm. We had stringent laws. We had education for the public. We had advanced technology for detection. Mm -hmm. yes. yes, I remember hearing you talk about the advanced technology for detection because the, um, the police officer you work with had mentioned that, right? Um, anybody else wants to talk about alternatives that they think might be stronger than simple amnesty alone? No? Miss, you help them to do the work. Can you talk? I know you want to talk some more. Can you tell us about those alternatives? I said alternatives? I'm not talking. I'm not talking. By the way, Mrs. Miss Simon is my past, my former English teacher <laughs> over there at DGS. So, hi, Miss. Hi, Miss. <laughs> yes. Um, in regards to alternative strategies, indeed, they are more successful than, than gun amnesties. For example, um, the United States have partnered with several Caribbean islands, including Dominica, Jamaica, St. Lucia. Actually, they have established a gun something unit, a forensic, a gun forensic center in St. Lucia, where you can bring in your guns, get them analyzed, fingerprints, and so on, oh, when a crime to has help been with investigation. Okay. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So there are other strategies that can be used. Frequent policing. Send the police out. I mean, sorry, police. I know you may be watching. They like to stay in the police station and lie down. Sorry. But, you know, go out and... Uh, you know, show your face, make your presence known into the communities. Um, education as well, 
is another key alternative strategy. You can inform the public or educate the public on the laws regarding gun control and registering of firearms. Some people, they want the firearms for protection, hunting, whatever the case may be, but they don't know the correct to the right procedures. Mm -hmm. So if we have little educational programs and so on to inform the public, that will help as well, alongside mm -hmm. with the amnesty. We are not saying in conclusion that the amnesty is a total, total failure, but the alternative strategies yield greater success and they can be more beneficial in safeguarding our communities. Very good. Thank you so much, Miss. I understand that the judges are on their way back, so I call the students to come back to their seats now as the judges are making their way back into the room. So this afternoon, we have been discussing gun amnesties as the best way to reduce the illegal firearm possession issue in Dominica. The issue, um, the topic has been proposed by the Dominica Grammar School for Ilianet Jolly and Kishma Theophil and has been opposed by the Isaiah Thomas Secondary School through Amelia Charles, Joannelle Serra. We have our chief judge who is Mrs. Cara Schillingford Marsh and she was being assisted by Mr. Kevin Julian and Mrs. Shari Pascal Maroney this afternoon. And so I invite Mrs. Marsh to come forward and give us the judge's critique at this time. I will take the, great, the um, scores from her as she does that and I will announce the results once she's finished with her critique. Mrs. Marsh. Good afternoon, everyone. Okay, so today we, the judges, we were very impressed by the quality of the presentation from both sides. Um, clearly, a lot of work was done by the students and the teachers, supporters, etc., to prepare for today. Um, we note that there were certain factors, certain differences between the sides, which perhaps played a, a, a big role or um, these were deciding factors. Um, we were very impressed generally with the command of material. Um, we observed that um, one side may have been stronger with the command of material. Uh, we note that um, the, as it relates to logical development, um, the points were generally very strong um, the points were developed well, um, however, um, there were certain uh, presentations which we thought could have improved in terms of the logical development of the points. As it relates to personality and posture, um, we were, well, I, I personally, I was very captivated by the presentations. Um, in, in debates, the, the goal really is to convince your judges, convince the, the listeners, and as much as possible, you want to speak in a manner which is clear, which is powerful, and which captivates. Uh, as it relates to tone, um, I, well, my preference has always been um, the tone which is more powerful and commanding um, rather than something that sounds as though you're listening to a news broadcast, etc. Um, so I think that is something that we, we need to note um, in debating. We, the, the goal really is to convince your listener. So generally, uh, we were very impressed with the students. Um, clearly, they did a lot of work, a lot of research um, went into it. The scores in certain areas were very close, almost identical. Um, with the rebuttal, uh, we saw that both sides gave powerful rebuttals. Um, the, the students, that shows uh, an ability to think quickly and um, to respond quickly. We would like to see, however, uh, a better um, 
better relation back to the the points that were actually made so it may have probably be, been more effective if, if it is that the the points which were made by the other side um were individually reported uh, but generally you know in light of the fact that it's three minutes that was given um we thought that both sides did a very very good job in the rebuttal so um, we had a very difficult task as judges, very, very difficult. Um, but at the end of the day, we hope that the decision is something that will be accepted by everyone. And thank you. Thank you very much. I now invite the two point people. Um, Mrs. Um, Jajak, you are assisting as well, right? Okay, all right. Because that is not really a section I, I do myself. Um, all right, so now for the results. So, the judges have decided that our best speaker for today is Miss Amelia Charles, <laughs> the first speaker from Isaiah Thomas Secondary School. And the results are as follows. The proposing team, the Dominica Grammar School, 619 points. The opposing school, Isaiah Thomas Secondary School, 657.5 points. Which makes the Isaiah Thomas Secondary School the winning school for this debate. I now invite the students from the Dominica Grammar School to step forward so that they can receive their prizes. And these students are Elianet Jolly and Kishma Theofield. Good job. Go ahead. Good job. Good job. I want to let Elianet and Kishima know that the school scoring Elianet, your, your thing, the school scoring the highest um, in this round, in this um, quarterfinals round, will proceed to the next round. Yes, so we are just waiting to hear the scores of all all the teams that um, did not win their debates, and we'll see. So it might just be that you may very well be. Um, progressing to the next round, all right? And I think you guys did a wonderful job this afternoon. The winning team is the opposing team, Isaiah Thomas Secondary School. And the first speaker is Emilia Charles, and she is supported by Joannelle Seyran. All right, and uh, we want to let um, Emilia and Joannelle know that they are to proceed to the Alliance Francaise where they will dip for their topics for the next round, okay? I want to really thank everyone for coming out this afternoon. You can have your seats, ladies. Um, coming out this afternoon to support the debates. Um, it's always good when we have a full house or close to full house for these activities. And so I thank you very much. I want to thank the speakers that we had this afternoon. Elianet Jolly and Kishma Theophil from the Dominica Grammar School. Emilia Charles and Joanne El 
from Isaiah Thomas Secondary School. I want to thank the teachers who have served as coaches, the parents who have worked with the students, and their friends who have supported them. For me, I want to thank Ms. Hunter, who has been my timekeeper for this afternoon, Mrs. Jean-Jacques, who is our point person for this afternoon. I want to thank our three judges for being with us this afternoon. We know you're very busy people. We have Kevin Julian, Shari Pascal Maroney, and of course, our Chief Judge, Mrs. Cara Schillingford Marsh. Thank you so much for being with us this afternoon, all three of you. And if we would just stand for a closing prayer. Oh, I forgot about because it's not me that's supposed to do that. So I forgot about it because I'm supposed to get a prize. So sit for a while. And that's what I was saying. I don't do that part. <laughs> yes, I don't do that part. Oh, well, thank you very much. I get a prize. All right. And then we have prizes for Mrs. Marsh, who's the chief judge. Clap for Mrs. Marsh. <laughs> Mr. Kevin Julian. <laughs> Mrs. Shari Maruni. There's a prize for the coach. We're never recognized as coaches. Isn't that nice? What? Come forward. Let her come forward. Come forward, miss. That is wonderful. All right, and now we stand for prayers. Heavenly Father, we thank you, we bless you, we praise your holy name for answering our prayers and for allowing smooth proceedings this afternoon. We thank you for blessing our students, our audience members, both here at the UWI and those listening. We thank you, O oh Lord, that it has been a wonderful debate. Father Lord, we pray that as we go on our way, you will provide us with traveling mercies, and we make our prayer in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, it's now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Goodbye, everyone.